last time we joined Chef Aston Price on The Heartbeat, he taught us how to create roses, shells, and leaves in the cake decorating process. In this session, he's teaching us how to use whipped topping to create another aesthetically pleasing cake design. Welcome, I am Kevin Baxter, and this is another presentation in the Heart NSTA Trust lecture series. Let's join Chef Price for the final installation on cake decorating. Thank you, Kevin. All right, so here we have some chocolate melting, and you're gonna see later on down how we utilize this chocolate. The first cake that we did, we used buttercream. But this next cake that we're going to be doing now is we'll be using whipped topping. What is whipped topping? It's just a mix. Um, that you can purchase in any supermarket. It's a powder, you whip it up with ice cold water. Water must be ice cold at all times, right? If you whip it up with room temperature water, it will just remain flat. Um, it's like an emulsion, and when we say an emulsion, the, <clears throat> the, the, the powder contains some ingredients that will allow the ice water to whip the, 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 the frosting to, to stiff peaks. Right? And the reason why I, I want to show you how to utilize this icing is because sometimes some persons will ask, why whipped topping? Or they'll ask, I'll prefer something more of a frosty texture. It's not as sweet as the buttercream, and it's a non-dairy um, whipped topping, meaning it contains no farmer milk. So it's non-dairy. So um, let's say you're doing a cake for someone who is lactose intolerant. You know that person cannot contain um, consume any form of dairy or not all. So this particular icing is ideal. It's not as sweet, as I said before, as the buttercream, and it's non-dairy. So I'm just going to kind of mix it out a little to kind of remove the air pockets. I remember when we spoke about the air pockets with the last video. Air pockets will cause your cakes to have um, what you'll call some little holes in it, and then you'll see it will show up in the finished texture or in the finished cake, and that's not what we want, right? So I'm just mixing this until it's smooth. And this is easy to make. Um, the, ingredient, the instructions are on the, it is, are on the back of the, 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 the bag that it comes in. You just have your ice water on hand, and you just whip it up using your mixer. You have to use a mixer. You can't use a, 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 the whisk that we have at home. You have to use a mixer because it's, it, it whips up better and it whips up faster with a, a tabletop mixer, one of those kitchen aids, or even one of the, the small ones that you plug in, the handheld mixers. Yes, it has to be mechanically whipped, right? So we're just kind of getting rid of some of the air pockets. And if, what, if you realize that it's much whiter than the icing before, the icing was almost of a cream color, and that's because of the butter and the shortening. Well, this one is much whiter than the icing we used before. All right? So this is good and mixed. Just put this to one side. All right, so for the last cake that we did, or the cake before with the buttercream, we did three layers. For this one, I'm going to do four, so you kind of have a little bit of height, so you see the difference in. I'm going to use the same filling cream in the middle, layer, cream in the middle, layer, cream in the middle, layer. But I'm going to do something just as a bit different. But before I get to that, you'll realize that I have some new stuff on the table. We have some Wilton spray, green, black, and blue. And we also have some, we, call, we, we like to call it um, petal dust. And we have red, we have gold, right? You can, again, you can get these purchased at any one of those uh, cake stores. And also you can even purchase them online. It's a bit expensive to invest in, but the, once you have them, it's good to, to have it. It brings your cakes to a different level, all right?
This now is what we'll, what I call a soak, right? Sometimes when you bake a cake and it's a little bit on the drier side, what we like to do sometimes is to soak it. And when we say soak it, bring back moisture to the cake, right? Because sometimes when you bake a cake, um, let's say you bake it like a two or three days before and you store it in the refrigerator, um, the refrigerator tends to dry it out a little bit. So what you want to do is to bring back a little bit of moisture to the cake so when you're eating it, it's not as dry um, and it's not um, crumbly or dry. It's just moist and nice, right? In the, the soak we have right here is just regular granulated sugar, um, vanilla, a little bit of rum, and some rose water and some almond extract. <clears throat> you want to maintain the same color as the cake because if you realize that the cake is almost white, and this is almost of a champagne color, you want to maintain the same color of your soak as the cake. If you're doing like a black forest cake, you'd go something darker. And, but if you're doing like a white cake, you want to ensure, especially if you're putting like a white filling in the middle, you want to ensure that the soap that you're using is the same color as your cake, all right? So. so. We're going to soak our cake. You can purchase um, soap bottles online. Um, it comes, it's like a regular bottle like this, but it comes with a flat top with holes in the top, so you can just turn it out and soak your cake. But for now, I'm just going to use my pastry brush and just soak the top of the cake. You don't want to soak it too much, or else that's going to be cause problem for you to take it up. It's going to become too wet and soggy. You don't want that. Just bringing back a little bit of moisture to our cake. And as I said, you can make soak your soak from anything. All right. In this, we have granulated sugar, water rum, a little almond extract, and some uh, rose water. Right, so we'll just soak that a little. Right, I'm going to go without the piping bag, just to show you. Because the last cake I did, we had used the piping bag. I'm going to show you without the piping bag. All right. So it's, again, the same push and pull technique. So you're pushing the excess to the edge of the cake. Same push and pull. So for every layer of cake you put down, you add a little bit of soak to it. Every layer of cake. So you try to soak everywhere as much as possible. Just try to put a little bit of the liquid on every layer. Because you don't want when <coughs> you, eat, you, you cut into the cake and you start eating it, one layer is dry and then the other layer is moist. Understand? So for every layer, just put on a little of the liquid. Some more cream. Spread evenly. Put 
pushing from the center of the cake to the edge. Next layer, flip it over, put it down, take a look, good so far, some more liquid, see, baking can be fun, once you have the patience, because sometimes the reason why some persons don't really like baking is because it takes a lot of time, I personally love it. I have all the time in the world sometimes because when you finish and you look at a finished product, you say, I just did that. And then when somebody, you, you, you give somebody the cake or you sell the cake or whatever it is, what's the, whatever purpose it is they did the cake for, you know, they enjoy the cake, they really like it and it looks really good. So I, my, my satisfaction that I get from it is not really when I... I do it. It's just that when, when I see someone eat into my cake and it tastes really good and I really like how it looks and they, they enjoy it, that's, that's what I get from it, my satisfaction. So a little bit more cream. So as I said, I'm going three layers instead. Of, I'm going four layers, sorry, instead of, instead of three. Take a look. Good. Then just put on the top layer. All right. So if you look, if you're looking now, you realize that we have one cream, two cream, three cream, then the fourth layer. All right. Sometimes what you can do is just to turn your turntable to see if everything is leveled, right? Sometimes if you use like a filling or if you use like fresh fruits, sometimes you realize that there will probably be like sometimes a belly in the middle. What you can do is just to use a knife and when you step back and look at it, you just kind of trim it down a little bit, right? So you get everything on an even layer, right? So just add a little, remember, each layer, soak. And if you're someone that do, um, if you don't consume rum, you can just use the same vanilla, um, sugar, water, uh, the almond extract, and the rose water. If you if you don't consume rum, that is right. Okay, you know we have some persons out there who don't drink any rum, and let's say you're doing it for a child, you don't want to put any rum in it, right? But you can put a little, but not too much where it's overpowering, all right? But then sometimes for some persons who they've never consumed drumming it ever in their life, they'll say, I got a cake full of rum. We never asked for no rum cake, you understand? So, you know, so you have to be careful with that sometimes because we all know how Jerry and him nephew stay, right? So, so just put a little on top. Before I get to the top. All right, so if you realize that this cake is a bit um, higher than the one I did before with the buttercream, so I'm going to use my much longer offset spatula and kind of just smooth around. If you realize again, yes, still crumb, but that can be fixed. All right, so we'll just do the same crumb coat that we're doing. And again, if you don't remember, the purpose of the crumb coat is to seal in the crumbs in the cake. And it's just a thin layer of icing that we use to kind of just 
sealy in the crumbs. And then also, too, sometimes when you are lifting up your palette knife from your cake, I'm going to show you two, I'm going to show you the way in which you have to do it. You don't just do this, because if you do that, you realize what happens. It pulls up the cake. What you want to do, it can be fixed. What you want to do is just slide, slide it up like that. Because if you just pull it up like that, you're going to pull up the cake. You don't want any of that. And then that now is going to result with um, crumbs being in your, your, your frosting, and that's not what you want. So you just slightly slide the, cake, the palette knife off your cake, like that, or like this, and you're good. All right? Okay, just put this on the side. Just shake a little. And again, if you realize, this is much softer than the one we used before because it's just the whipped topping mix and <coughs> ice cold water. Just ice cold water and the whipped topping mix. And this one, you keep in the refrigerator. The other one, you can keep it at room temperature because of the, the, the fat that is in it. Because if you know what will happen if you put fat in the refrigerator, it becomes hard. So then now you're going to have to leave it again to thaw out and, you know, sometimes you're in a hurry. So this one, you just keep it in the refrigerator and you're good to go. Let's put some here. So the same thing when you're taking up your palette knife, just slide up, don't pull up, because you'll pull up the cake. You don't want any of that. All right. Then now, just bring it in. Very good. Now, but then when I, when I was going to school, uh, my chef tell, um, used to tell me that if you fail sanitation, you fail the entire course. Um, sanitation is how you keep your, your area clean, how you, how you prepare your food and all of that. So if you fail sanitation, you fail the entire course. So you have to try to maintain a clean work environment, a tidy work environment at all times. In the cooking world, we call that mise en place, right? And that is like pre-preparation, pre-prep, so we keep everything in place. So if you realize, if you notice, I have everything that I need at hand. So I can just pull up from there, pull from there, pull from there, pull from there. I don't have to be searching and coming out and moving and moving all around. Everything that I need is within arm's length. All right? Just here. Yes, and by the way, I'm not dropping it on the floor. I have a garbage bin here, so just bear that in mind. There's a garbage bin under my table, so I'm not dropping it on the floor. All right, so we're just pushing the mix or the frosting to the edge of your cake. You can start from the top. You can start from the side. It doesn't really matter. Wherever you feel, which from whichever angle you feel comfortable, it's up to you, right? You have some persons who like to start from the top, some persons who like to start from the side. That one fell out. But. So, just push it to the edge. Just 
sometimes they can just stop and look to see if the top of the cake is flat. Right. And we just good. Then now some on the side and work your way down. So start from the top and work your way down. Put a little more. So if you realize with this one, I didn't put any in the piping bag, I didn't pipe around, right? Because I'm showing you the different ways in which you can apply your icing to your cake. So you just work your way around, light as a feather, <clears throat> work your way around. Try to maintain the shape of your cake. Work your way around. Try to maintain the shape of your cake. For me, I like using this one because it's more flexible than the buttercream. But let's say I'm traveling with my buttercream. That one is much better because it holds up better at room temperature. But for this one, it must be refrigerated because you don't want to send a cake with whipped topping that's going up, um, 10, 15, I even put it that way, a whole hour and a half from where you decorate the cake. By the time it gets there, everything is going to be melted off of it. It's going to be soft and mushy. And so if you know that some person is coming to pick it up and it's going like five, 10 minutes to where they put it on the refrigerator and you're good. But an hour's drive, two hours drive, then you're in a problem. Unless you're in like a refrigerated vehicle or um, you're in an AC vehicle and the AC is really cold, then it will keep it. But walking with it in the boiling Jamaican sun hot, you're in for a serious treat, trust me. And not the good treat, the bad one. All right? So we just some of the edges that we have here. So you see, you, when you're decorating cakes, you must have a keen eye for details. You can't just look and leave and, oh, that's it, and you go away. No. It takes time. It takes patience. If you're, if you're one of those impatient persons, find something else to do because cake decorating is not for you. Pastry on a whole is not for you because it takes time, and you have to pay attention to what you're doing. Remember this tool that we, that we spoke about, call it a bench scraper or an icing smoother. I'm going to show you how to. I didn't use it with the buttercream. I was specifically wanted, I wanted to show you with this one. For this one now, what you'll do, you'll hold it at an angle on the cake, right? And you keep going around until the cake is smooth. So it gives it a very smooth finish because of the height of the cake. And 
stop and look at it. And sometimes you realize that when you're smoothing it out, you realize that there's a little peephole right there. So what you do, just take a little bit, and put it back over it. Remember, keen eye for detail. That's how you use your bin scraper or your fondant smooth or your icing smoother. Then now for the top, you just center. So you create a sharp edge. It's just this one right here. I'll use a smaller one. So you just bring to the center of the cake. Remember working with the center of the cake, so try to maintain everything in the center of the cake. Right? And we just try our best to smooth it out. I'm going to leave the sides as is, but I'm just going to just to comb the top of it. Right, just uh, in a circular fashion. Just bring that in. Very good. Then no, the fix our little spot that was you know, disrupted by the palette knife. Just put a little tip on the edge. Remove that bit of crumb. Put a little bit of tip right there. See? And voila. No more mess. Where is it? It's gone. Everything back on one level.
what we do now is just to clean up the edge of our thing. For this cake, now I'm going to go in a bit of a different direction. I'm going to spray a little gold dust. Yeah, man. Wow. What an expensive cake, eh? Gold dust. Hmm? Yeah, man. See if you can tell how much carrot it is. See, 40 carat. There's a lot of gold at it. There's a lot of gold. It's a 40 carat gold cake. Right? So, what you do now? You just spray. Right, so you have a few specks of gold right around. Right. Can put more if you want, but then no. On the top of our cake, so remember we did some shells. For this one, I'm going to do some rosettes using a large star tip. The other one we did use a, a closed star tip. This one is an open star tip, right? So drop it in the bag. Just cut. A little. Then what I'll do now is to just if you realize I'm not coloring any icing, not coloring anything. Close the bag, squeeze out the air. And then we do some rosettes on top. All right, so one, two, three, it's like a circular motion. Four, five, six, you know, I like to count. Then you remember when we when I showed you the chocolate that I was melting. So this is just regular chocolate. Um, you can buy it in the supermarket, melt it in a double boiler. When we say double boiler, we mean like you put put on a pot of water, then you put the chocolate in either a not a plastic bowl, no, either a glass bowl or a metal bowl, or you can even put it in the microwave like every 10 seconds to watch it because the thing with chocolate is that it can burn, right? And we don't want it to burn, we just want it to melt. To ensure that there's no lump or anything inside. Because when you put it in the bag, you don't want to have any problems. So just give it a quick mix. So that no 
lumps. Sometimes one or two lumps will get away depending on the type of chocolate that you have, but that's fine. You just keep mixing. So you guys can see. So remember, triangle. Right. Knife. So you can see what I'm doing. So the knife. This is one of those bags that you have to practice to make. So remember, A, B, C. So A to B, right? And then bring around C. So can join the party, right? Tighten up a little. Just close. Make sure that the tip is closed. Then pour chocolate. You realize it's running. Still a bit warm, but don't matter. it's not warm enough to melt the cake. It's just warm enough to pipe. Close. Right. Here's my scissors. Put my scissors on hand. I just Cut a little hole right here. Just cut. And just see how well it squeezes. Right? So you see it drips out. Good? No. Writing is very, very. It took me years. And when I say years, I mean years to perfect writing. And as I said, if you can't write, you just cut out some shit. Did the, you remember the, the little number thingy that I showed you? The, no, sorry, not number, letters. Just cut them out and put them on top of the cake. But sometimes it's always best to practice your writing skills because on a cake like this now, you don't want to put anything fondant or anything. You just want everything to just look clean and well finished, right? So writing now, it's something that you have to practice. Trust me. When I used to work in the hotels, um, I wasted a lot of chocolate because at nights I'm there practice. I was going to work like an hour, one hour, hour and a half early just to practice, right? I sometimes even ask my supervisor for a piece of chocolate carry it home and a practice. So the thing is that these things that I'm showing you, it is something that you have to practice, right? So I'm just going to write happy birthday. You can write pretty much anything you can. Once you, you master how to write, you can write anything. And I always say, practice starting to write the letters of the alphabet, A, B, C, D, E, and you go, all, go right down until you perfect them. Practice writing the letters of the alphabet. If you know you can't do that, then what you can do is to go to a regular print, print or if you're at school, um, print one of the the, the, the the alphabet stencils, put the grease paper over it, and practice to write. Trace it over it until you perfect it. Right? That's what I did. Right? So, watch carefully. Start with H. And just cut this a little bit bigger. Good. So 
for writing. takes time. So, writing takes practice. So, you have to always say, practice on a piece of paper first before you go on a cake. Because once you go onto the cake, you can't remove it. Or it's going to be difficult to remove it, and you're going to mess up, and then you're going to have to scrape off everything, and then, you know. So you practice, practice on a piece of paper until you get it. Happy. So many times I practice to write happy before I move on to birthday. A lot of times. So you just practice. Practice, practice writing happy. So you see? Can't use this to do anything. You just dispose of it. Right, get another bag. I have enough chocolate to spare, so. I'm just gonna write happy birthday. Keep pressure on the bag. And go. Right. So it's just practice. Just practice. Keep practicing, keep practicing. So just going just write a small one on the cake right here. So you can see. Then Then now, let's create a big hole right there. And then do a bit of drizzle. Then now, remember I told you about not doing any form of coloring or anything. I'm going to just lightly spray the top. Can do this, you can do a mixture of colors, green, give the bag a quick shake. Or even black. <coughs> Sorry about that. Alright. And then Top it off now with a little gold dust. And we finish. So, happy birthday. So, many ways there are, you can do pretty much anything once you set your mind to it. If you are a buttercream fan, if you are a whipped topping fan, it doesn't matter. But as all I say is practice. Practice, practice. If you have missed any in the series, you can review all the presentations at your convenience on our YouTube channel. Continue to share your feedback through our social media page or WhatsApp on 876-279-7930. Thank you for joining us on The Heartbeat. See you again next time.